are we sending a message? Are we sending a purposeful message? Is there a machine that is creating a frequency and sending that out into the universe right now from our planet? Yeah, we've done a couple of stunts. Think about it. If you transmit whatever your message is, however you want to to create it and transmit it, if you transmit it for five minutes, that message is going to go past your intended target in five minutes, right? It's only going to be visible for five minutes. And so at the target, somebody would have to be looking at you with exactly the right tools at exactly the right time. Mm. So transmission for me has always been a long-term project. And I don't think we're grown up enough to take that on, right? I think that um, if you start to transmit, you have to continue uh, and and do it for timescales that we humans are not used to dealing with, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. So you asked if we're transmitting. Mm Mm-hmm. As I said, there were these stunts, limited time, but we are also um, leaking radiation, right? We have broadcast transmitters that are leaking off the planet. And of course, they're not very strong because they're intended to illuminate the next county, Mm -hmm. not the next star system. But with some sufficiently advanced technology, it might be detectable. We are modifying our atmosphere because of biology and technology. So the components in our atmosphere are, well, first of all, it's highly oxygenated due to life, um, due to photosynthesis. And the, um, some of the trace gases are remnants of technology. Um, that's Our technology? Yeah, our technology that could be seen at a distance. Um, So we are detectable by a sufficiently advanced um, civilization. Is it impressive to you how far we've come in a short amount of time as humans? I think it's impressive. I think when you think of, well, my mother died when she was uh, 98. Wow. Um, When I think Mm -hmm. of the changes that she saw in her lifetime. Mm-hmm. It's pretty astonishing. And people, young people now are all about change and nothing stays the same. And they are used to the fact and they begin to expect and require and anticipate that things will change. In mm-hmm. particular, their devices will get faster or more capable or yeah. they will have other ways of communicating with their um, with their peers. Uh, and they will be able to access information in ways that we never could before. And so their lives will be different as a result. Is there anybody, uh, is there someone young? It makes me think of just asking the question, if there's somebody very young with a perhaps completely new perspective that's introduced an idea um, into the realm of um, the universe and what's out there that has been monumental in taking steps forward and discovering more? Well, I think the answer to that inevitably is yes. If you limit it to what we've been doing. Yeah, there are, um, there's receiver technology that's new. So how you build whatever it is that takes the energy that's collected by a reflector, a telescope of some kind, Mm -hmm. and transforms it into a voltage as a function of time and then transforms that into a frequency pattern. Mm -hmm. Those technologies have changed. Um, Mm -hmm. They're things, just just different kinds of things that we we didn't have before. Yeah. Can do. And, And again, often young people who are clever and come at this from a different direction. And they say, oh, I have this gadget. Mm. And, and maybe if I take a look at your data, that gadget can tell me something that you haven't been looking for. So, yes. And I, I, hopefully more of that will happen. Um, you had mentioned time and, um, I'm always fascinated by the idea of this time, space, reality, time and space. And 
what is it and does it exist in in the universe and and is time and space the way that we know it is that is that local is that a is that a local phenomenon here on the planet well there have been some experiments again you know, the quantum physicists love to talk about this stuff and and try and do experiments to the best of my knowledge they have not found any locality that that time and space and the physics that connect them do seem to be universal and not limited to our our local neighborhood mm. how does that explain quantum entanglement then well that's certainly a non-local phenomena i mean it starts out locally but then you can separate the the entangled particles or states by large distances and yet they instantaneously respond to a perturbation in one in one place at at a great distance so that's definitely not local mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how does it explain it i don't know i mean i i think quantum entanglement is something that lots of smart people are scratching their heads over spooky things happening at a distance right isn't that what einstein called it yep he did and he didn't believe it but he acknowledged it yeah well but he he fundamentally did not think that this um was a part of the structure of the universe i find it fascinating that there's newtonian physics and then there's quantum physics or quantum mechanics and they don't jive yet they're both essentially been proven to be true yeah it's scale right so at at the earliest times and smallest scales, we cannot yet make gravity and quantum mechanics play nice together, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't, as you try and go back and describe the structure of the universe at smaller scales and earlier times, mm -hmm. we see a breakdown. We, we can't carry it all the way back to the singularity. And that's just because there's more for us to learn about the physics of the universe. Do you believe that there is a theory of everything? Yes, I do. I, I do believe that there is some fundamental underlying structure and reason and physics that will ultimately explain everything. But I think a, the moment we're more like um, when early astronomers were trying to explain the um, the orbits of the planets by using perfect circles, right? They weren't allowing mm -hmm. for ellipses, and they kept adding complexities. So they added another layer of circles, epicycles, and that kind of thing. I think we might be somewhat in that state in the sense that we haven't figured out what the ellipse is that um, helps us to, to get to a theory of everything. What will be the ripple effect of that? If you can, if there could be a way to quantify from scale, the largest to the smallest things, what happens next? Well, it would really have a big effect on the stock market, I'll say. <laughs> Um, in what way if we get to be a multi body or multi planetary civilization how are we going to deal with making a transaction in one place when there are all these different time delays from those who want to make the transactions being at different distances away um at one point, oh, I can't remember who it was. Someone uh, suggested that uh, neutrinos might help solve this problem if we could, in fact, build neutrino detectors because they would be able to take the shortest paths and go right through everything to get from- What's a neutrino? A neutrino is a fundamental particle um, massless, uh, and it's produced in high energy, 
collisions of, of particles. And it, um, it was very hard to prove the existence of a neutrino, but basically it doesn't interact with anything. So mm. it goes through lead without ever seeing the lead atoms. Right. Um, and so that wow. perhaps neutrinos could help solve this transactional difficulty because they could go straight through everything and how, how you trap them. That, that of course, is the question. Um, and they wouldn't have to follow the space-time paths that, that photons take. Mm -hmm.